Hey everyone, Eric Levy here, yet you're watching another episode and video from my YouTube channel, secondary YouTube channel and vlog in which I present to you. All my sentimental thoughts come from my heart and my soul, and my mental eyeball shenanigans come from my mind and brain. This is EML Series 7 TV, episode 868. Did I say I'm Eric Lehman already? I did? Okay, that's fine. Alright. Um, Roth on the Dome, re um, recap. For September 21st, 2020. This is September 22nd, 2020. First day of fall. 7.35 p.m. We're ready to go here. Alright? Alright, the final Raw Thunder Dome before the Clash of Champions this coming Sunday. Remember, I'll make my picks and predictions this weekend on the on the event. Uh, Retribution came out to cut a promo saying that the WWE as superstars have been doing it for money. And they're willing to make Retribution pay. Well, her business comes out and responded, challenges them to a matchup. Then a fight just happened. Brawl ensues, no surprise, when it comes to retribution. Now the identities of retribution have been revealed via the internet, and the obvious is the um, young lady with the blue hair in the center. Mia Yim has made her debut, along with Mercedes Martinez, two of the veteran indie ladies, along with Dominic Dijakovic, Dio Madden, and possibly Shane Thorne. But they have different names. Um, the three men do. At least the three men do, and more on that. Um, Sarah Schreiber inter interviewed the Mysterio family as um, they decided um, to get ready for Dom's uh, tag team match with Humberto Carrillo in a triple threat match to determine the number one contenders for the Raw Tag Team titles. The winning team will face the Street Profits at Clash of Champions. The other two teams, well, they're been on the outs. Gaz and Andrade and Rollins and Murphy. During the matchup, Rollins walked out on Murphy. Murphy cannot believe what's going on. Gaza Andrade and, and Dominic Mysterio and Carrillo took advantage of this, but Gaza Andrade won. So they'll get another tag team, Raw tag team title shot against the Street Profits at um, this Sunday's Clash of Champions. It looks like um, they decided, I think, they probably knew that Zelina Vega was the problem and not each other, and I hope they do well. And Retribution did respond to that uh, challenge by the Hurt Business, and they accepted it, so we're, they were waiting on the network to make the matchup, the executives to make the match. Kevin Owens' show, the KO show, uh, Shane McMahon, despite the fact that they were uh, kind of hated each other back in, in a few years ago, well, they were cordial and talked about Raw Underground, the Battle of the Behemoths, Dabakato arrived, and Kevin Owens slapped him. I'm like, eh, boy. But then Braun Strowman came out, the two had a standoff. While the two had a standoff, Alistair Black came, attacked KO from behind by nutting him on, you know, you know, you grab the opponent's legs and then ram him on the, turn, on the turnbuckle there. Did that three times. Poor guy. Hope he's okay. And then Alistair Black is going to pay for it. And then Drew McIntyre talked about, um, talked to Charlie Caruso about his match against Keith Lee, where if Keith Lee won the matchup, they w he would fill in for Andy Orton if Orton does not show up or not medically cleared to compete. But Randy Orton attacked McIntyre during the matchup, giving him the DQ, and he says he'll be there, and he'll be the 14-time World Heavyweight Champion. And that match is under ambulance match rules. Sarah Schreiber, um, doing her job again, interviewed Oscar about her um, about the match between Zelina Vega and Mickie James, that the winner in that match faces her at Clash of Champions. But the former Iconics team of Billy Kay and Peyton Royce did interrupt Oscar, and Oscar goes one-on-one -on -one with Peyton Royce later that night. Then Zelina Vega versus Mickey James happened, and Zelina Vega picked up a huge victory over an established veteran like Mickey James in the matchup. And so she's ready. And remember, she is a former TNA Knockouts champion. The Hurt Business won up Retribution in the backstage, while Retribution did attack earlier after McIntyre interview was interviewed by Charlie Caruso. Retribution attacked Titus O'Neil, her brother Carrillo, and all that. Her business says, okay, you want to play that game? Two can play that game. They took out all the less members of Retribution. This is going to be fun. Uh, Bianca Belair did a vignette where some poor sap is trying to lift weights and all that. And tried everything, but Bianca Belair says, mm-mm, this is how it works. And she basically said that she's the EST of NXT. I say Bianca Belair is the future of the women's division. Watch her and watch her in the future. Um, I think uh, she will she will surprise a lot of people and open up a lot of eyes in, in the WWE. I'm hoping that's the case. Well, Akira Tozawa and our truth our truth is hilarious. Oh, God bless our truth. I love this guy. This guy's hilarious. 
<laughs> he, and he's, they're hanging out about the beach. At the beach. You know, the last day of summer. And figured, you know. And he's walking little. He's at the little Jimmy thing again. I'm like, they brought back little Jimmy. Oh my, this is too funny. So Akira Tozawa and his ninja referee friends, and we hide in the beach. The referee's like, no, 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 we, we, no, we're hiding in the water. I'm like, what do they think, right? All of a sudden, you see the shark fin come up. I think it's a fake shark fin. And then all of a sudden, our truth yells, shark, sharkinado, my like, sharkinado. I'm like, oh man, I'm dying at this point. Right? I'm chuckling at this point. And he goes, oh my gosh, I'm gonna give. And then he, and then the idiot lost his title. I'm like. I, I, I hate not calling R2 an idiot, but, you know, he's, he behaves like one. But that's his, that's his whole thing. And uh, I'm cracking up laughing. He's like, playing this title. What's he thinking? That title is not going to come back, right? We get a shark's going to pin him or something like that? <laughs> I don't know. So, <laughs> and all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute. And he, and he comes back. And they're looking around for the title. All of a sudden, he finds the title. He finds little Jimmy. He takes off. We want a shark again. Sharknado 2! Calgon, take me away! I'm laughing at the Calgon line. I thought it was the funniest line ever. Calgon, take me away. I'm dying over here. I was like, when was the last time we heard that line? It was hilarious, man. But okay, R2 did escape with a 24-7 title. But what if Tazawa and the referee, hopefully they didn't get eaten by the shark. Hopefully they're okay. But might I digress. It, it is a... Last day of summer. Um, Cedric Alexander, the Hurt Business, went one-on-one with Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews says he'll get his ma- he'll get that title back at Clash of Champions. That match is going to happen. Apollo Crews, as a result, did pick up the victory to get that momentum in. But MVP said, don't worry, we'll get bigger fish to fry. Later on. Arturo, Ru- uh, Arturo Ruas uh, uh, went one-on-one with Dolph Ziggler in Raw Underground with... Ziggler picking up the victory over the Brazilian jiu-jitsu ju- ju- expert. Brianna Brandy makes her debut, interviewing Braun Strowman. Strowman says he's pumped up. He's, he says he's going to beat Dabakato. Then Seth Rollins, who walked out on the matchup, the triple threat match, arrived again with an envelope in his hand. I said, this is not bad. And then the Mysterio family arrived on the scene. And Seth Rollins says, well, you're not the father. What? I was like, uh, I think we went through this before, Rollins, you idiot. And then, uh, not not your son, but your daughter. Like what? Again, that poor nineteen year old girl. And she goes, listen. And and, and once he's and Wayne Mysterio says she's nineteen, she's naive, she doesn't know anything about our world. Aaliyah kind of looks at her, looks at her own dad, and walks out. I'm like, oh boy. Rollins is really really sticking and really really doing it to them, and I, I hate it. I hate it when that happens. Well, and then um, Aaliyah then told off her father. She was a little upset with him, and. She, Walked off. I'm back backstage, and then Rey Mysterio says, "You talk to her, please talk to her." And you know, you know, and Rey Mysterio and Dominic were discussing things. Maybe she's feeling upset, frustrated. I don't know. Anyways, uh, women's tag team matchup: Nia Jax, Shane, and Baszler, the women's tag team champions, in a non-title match against Natalia and Lana. While the Riot Squad was on color commentary, uh, Nia Jax and Shane and Baszler did pick up the victory. And then they started a little scuffle with the Riot Squad. And then Nia Jax sent the message by putting Lana through, through the announce table. Poor Lana. Ever since Rusev, the, former, the man formerly known as Rusev, her husband, now Miro, is on AEW. It seems like Vince McMahon was not very happy about that. And I don't know why Vince McMahon, he's got a nah, he's very, very, very petty, petty attitude. He's got to stop this old school carny ways because this is not the 80s no more, Vince. Let me tell you. All right. And then after well, after the attack by on Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre was interviewed again, and he says, "You know what? I'm out of here. I need a, I need to look for a fight." More on that. Um, Raw Underground continued on. Uh, Ran, uh, Riddick Moss went one on. I almost called him Randy Moss, just like our truth did. That was so funny. Uh, Rick Moss went one on one with Eric of the Viking Raiders uh, with Ivar out. Eric's been doing a lot of Raw Underground, and Rick Moss did pick up the victory over. Eric had the Viking Raiders. Oscar went one on one with Peyton Royce, which Oscar picked up the DQ victory because of Selena Vegas interference in the matchup. And then Buddy Murphy did approach Aaliyah Mysterio and apologize to her, and just that was it. Walked out. So you know, so it's something. So that's something to figure out. Uh, Raw Underground, Braun Strowman went one-on-one with G- D- Dabakato in the main event of Raw Underground. These two beat the living heck out of each other. Uh, they, and, and they were playing, uh, they were tossing one, pushing one guy around, which was too funny. 
But in the end, Braun Strowman did pick up the victory over the 7-foot 400-pounder Daba Kato. I'm surprised these two have not joined forces. If they do, look out. I think a tag team matchup could happen. Six-man tag team matchup. The Ret- Retribution finally make their debut. But Dominic Dijakovic, possibly Shane Thorne, and Dio Madden have under, on different names. Uh, Shane Thorne is basically Slapjack. Dio Madden is basically Mace. And Dominic Dijakovic is T-Bar. As Jerry the King Lala had that acronym, that boy ain't right. <laughs> That's too funny. Um, after, it was a heck of a matchup, uh, Mace and T-Bar could operate as a tag team because they are two big men, you know, that are about mean and nasty as they come. But, and uh, the Hurt Business did pick up the victory over the DQ victory because Bobby Lashley had uh, Slapjack in the, in the uh, Hurt Lock, about to get him in the Hurt Lock, and then uh, as Slapjack backed him into Lashley into a corner, T-Bar hit him, that's an illegal man involvement. Um, in the matchup, and then all of a sudden, a full-scale brawl, the rest of Retribution, all the Lester members came in the ring, and uh, beat up in a hurt business, and then McIntyre led the charge for the rest of the Law Rocker Room, it was a full-scale brawl, and in the middle of all that, all that Randy Orton comes up and RKO's Drew McIntyre. And I'll tell you one thing, I hope, hope McIntyre's medically cleared. So, so here is the um, the final uh, tally for Clash of Champions 2020. Um, make, but I'll make my picks and predictions over the weekend. Uh, the WWE Championship will be on the line. Drew McIntyre to defend against Randy Orton in an ambulance match. The Universal Title will be on the line as Roman Reigns defends against Jay Uso. The SmackDown Women's Championship on the line. Bailey will defend against Nikki Cross. The Women's Tag Team Title will be on the line. Shan- uh, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax to defend against the Riot Squad. That's a team of Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan. The SmackDown Tag Team Champion on the line, the Champions Lounge Artist Collective team of uh, Cesaro and Nakamura will defend those titles against the Lucha House Party, consists of Kalisto, Grand Talik, and Lince Dorado. Which two of the three? Well, Lucha House Party has that advantage. And the Intercontinental title in a winner-take-all match, uh, in a ladder match, will be on the line. As Jeff Hardy will defend that title along uh, against Sami Zayn and his Intercontinental title and the former champion AJ Styles. The Raw Tag Team title has been set. It will be the Street Profits to defend those titles against the team of Andrade and Angel Garza. Meanwhile, the Raw Women's Championship will be on the line in the kickoff show as Asuka will defend against their former, um, the former manager of, of Garza and Andrade, Zelina Vega. The United States title will be on the line as Bobby Lashley defends it against Cruz in a rematch. And that is the Raw Thunderdome recap of, two, of September the 21st. 2020. So, I hope you guys, um, what you guys think? Um, I know Raw, it was a little, it was a bit of a doozy, Monday Night Raw. Also, um, I will make a NXT recap for, um, uh, NXT recap for, uh, for tomorrow as, uh, the first ever Gauntlet Elimination matchup. Uh, Bronson Reed has been added to the uh, team. It will be Bronson Reed versus Kushida versus Kyle O'Reilly versus Timothy Thatcher and versus Cameron Grimes. And the, the first ever gauntlet elimination eliminator match, these are the rules. Two men will start in the ring. Every four minutes, another competitor will enter. The only way to be eliminated is by final f- f- submission means disqualification countouts. Anything goes in this matchup. And whoever wins will face Finn Balor for the title at the next eight. NXT TakeOver Sunday, October the 4th. That's a week after the um, the Clash of Champions. There also will be a, a Women's Battle Royal. Uh, number one contender Women's Battle Royal. The winner of that will face Io Shirai for the title at NXT TakeOver. And the competitors are Casey Catanzaro, Indy Hartwell, Aaliyah of the Robert Stone brand, Dakota Kai, Candice LeRae, Rhea Ripley, Tegan Knox, Shotzi Blackheart, Raquel, Raquel Gonzalez, Caden Cotter, and Zia Lee. And I sense that Zia Lee may end up winning. I'm picking Zia Lee as my dark horse pick because the change in attitude could help her and it'll be a heck of a matchup between her and Io Shirai. That's my opinion. And we'll find out as we go along here. So it'll be very interesting to see how these next two weeks go on NXT. All right? 
All right, that's all the time we have on the show, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, the Wild Thunderdome recap of September 21st, 2020, on, the la- on, the, on that last day of summer. I will see you on the next episode, 869, on the first day of Fall Thoughts. I'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful night. Peace, and I'll see you in episode 869.